What's up, guys? This is Coach Grant with First Down Training, and today we're going to be breaking down Josh Allen's throwing mechanics. We're going to talk about why he has such a strong arm, and if he has the strongest arm in the NFL, how he throws with so much velocity, a little critique I have on him, and how he's able to throw with a lot of velocity on the run, okay? And if you're a quarterback, guys, and you need to get better at reading coverages, please check out the link in the description below, guys. It would really help you guys out. It's a membership plan on my website where we give you 16 NFL defenses completely broken down from head to toe on my site per month. Okay, let's get started. So this is a clip from his pro day here. This is an absolute dime. This is about 70 yards downfield. Receiver drops it, but we're going to talk about his deep ball mechanics, why he's got so much pop on this ball, and why he could throw this thing with so much distance. Putting it right on the money, got to be at least 60 yards downfield. So when he comes up for this throw, the main thing is his shoulders I want to talk about, okay? Because if I don't arc my shoulders, I'm not going to get any air on the ball, okay? I'm going to end up pushing this thing in the air. My wrist's going to break, and I'm not going to have any pop, or I'm not going to have any finish on this thing. The ball won't turn over. So you want your shoulders to start out on this 45-degree angle, right? Now, he's going to be driving off this back leg. Now, the critique on him, and you're going to see in the next clip, is that he's always had a little bit of an overstride because his base gets close together, and maybe it's because of a little bit of baseball background. I don't know if he's played baseball before, but that was always my issue was an overstride, and I know it was because I had a baseball background and I used to pitch, so it's a very different motion, right? But see, when he drives off this back leg, his shoulders are going back, right? And he's getting to this almost L angle, a little bit low, but he's got these shoulders arced and he's getting to this L angle or somewhere in that range, okay? I'm not too particular about it being exactly on that L. I know a lot of people are, and um, there are benefits to it, but I think it's just somewhere in that range, just not lifting straight to 90, right? So when he gets that front foot in the ground, you can see he's got a slight bend in this leg, okay? Now, now, when that front foot gets in the ground and we're in this position with my arm, all I have to do is shoot this back hip through and it's going to come up and over the motion because my shoulders are arced, okay? That's how we're going to get a distance and we're going to rotate up and over this throw, okay? So that's exactly what he does. Now, when we play this thing in slow motion, you can see how much that back hip is coming through and how much it's opening up. You can see the ball is trailing his hip. His hip is coming through. The ball is trailing his hip. That's the position that we want to be in on every single throw. We want my back hip to drive through this throw. We want my back hip to carry me through this throw so I could rotate and get this thing up and over. And that's exactly what Allen does here. And you can see he leans out of this thing just a little bit with his head. The thing I teach my quarterbacks is we want to try to keep our eyes level so our head stays straight forward. And you can see what that does. His arm kind of comes outside of his frame here a little bit, but I'm not too worried about it because he was rolling out and because he kind of came off platform, that's going to happen, okay? Not every single throw is going to be completely mechanically sound. You're going to have to make off-platform throws and difficult throws. So, again, ball is chasing the hip. He flicks his wrist like he's shooting free throws, okay? That's one thing that I can't get a lot of people to do. They still want to bring their release down nice and normal level to their body, and that makes them come across their body. Their wrist breaks, so their wrist comes underneath this ball, and that's why the ball's a dud, and we don't get enough arc on it. Okay, so it's two parts. You got to have your shoulders arced and you got to flick your wrist almost like you're shooting free throws at the top of like the top of a basketball shot. Okay, and now to make sure we continue this rotational force, what if he just stopped right now and he just dropped this arm and he finished square? He wouldn't get this ball to turn over as much on him because he'd be stopping his rotational force. We want to let our body and our arm just swing through. And that's exactly what he does. You can see how much he finishes with this back shoulder on the target. Lead leg is cutting this target off. He's throwing this thing super early. That's the importance of air. If you tried to throw this thing on a line right now, it wouldn't get there. He wouldn't throw it at this spot on a line that receiver wouldn't get there that's the importance of air too many quarterbacks like to sit back there because it's the age of seven on seven and they don't throw this thing with air you got to throw it early you got to anticipate and you got to throw it there there's a great job by josh allen demonstrating that let's watch it full speed one more time drive off the back leg shoulders arced hips going up and over the throw flick that wrist rotate all the way through this throw that's a really great throw tough ball for the receiver to catch when it's that far downfield but not bad okay so now this is going to be a little bit of a critique on him but also it's going to be a positive as to why he's got a lot of velocity on his throw. Let's watch this thing full speed. So you can see the narrow base causes him to have an overstride. This ball still had a lot of velocity and he fit it in a tight window and we're going to talk about that. So you can see when he climbs up in this pocket, I want you to look at his feet. His feet are underneath his shoulders, okay? I would like my feet to be just outside of my shoulders. And this has always been the critique on Allen, even when he was at Wyoming. But, um, I know he's fixing it and I know that this year he's a lot better of a passer than he was last year, which is a testament to how much he's worked and how much he's actually improved this. But we want our feet to be just outside of our frame. We want it to be just outside of our frame. And I'll tell you why, because when we decide to push off of this back leg, you're going to see 
He's got a little bit of an overstride. It takes a while for this front leg to get in the ground. I would like this. Fr- I would like to already be in this position with my base. I drive off this back leg. That front foot gets in the ground quicker. My back hip comes through, and then I'm able to fire my hip through and have a quicker release on this ball, right? Because he does tend to have maybe a little bit longer of a release than a guy like maybe Drew Brees would have, or a guy maybe like um, Aaron Rodgers would have. And those guys are have the two quickest releases in the game, in my opinion. But see how his narrow base. When you drive, you have a little bit of an overstride. Now. Still good mechanics when he strikes the ground. He's got a slight bend in this front leg, okay? When we drive off that back leg, keep a slight bend, we're going to have ground force, okay? It's all about being able to produce ground force and then rotational force. As you can see, back hips coming through before the ball. That's a lot of torque. He's keeping this left arm tight to his body. That's how we produce torque. And then he rotates all the way through this throw. Now, just the main thing I want to talk about is just this overstride. Just got to try to get this front leg in the ground faster, quarterbacks. We can't have a long stride on this thing. He does a good job keeping a slight bend, but let's try to get this in the ground let's try to be in this position feet just outside my shoulders then i can just drive get it in the ground fast back hip comes through a little bit quicker okay that's the only critique i have let's watch this thing full speed one more time so again just a little bit longer of a stride okay and it's tough when you got to throw it into a tight window because you don't want to rip this thing and be too you know not accurate with it you really almost want to put this in this really tight window i don't want to say place it but you don't want to aim it you want to just still throw this thing right on the money and hit him right in stride and that's when the long strike can kind of come involved you know what i mean that's when the long strike can kind of happen okay just an easy fix needs to widen out his base a little bit okay so as we all know he's a pretty mobile quarterback right he can extend plays he's got the ability to extend plays to make throws on the run so that's what we're going to be breaking down today so let's watch this thing full speed so again, climbs up in his pocket, protects the ball. We're going to talk about that. And now we're going to talk about some mechanics on the run, okay? Because that is a dot to the back of the end zone. Now, when you're dropping back here and you're getting some pressure at this top shoulder, right? we got to protect the ball. That's number one. Now, everybody loves to see the quarterbacks who slide and they bring that ball up in their chest. And um, that's, comp- that's wrong, in my opinion, because you're not protecting the ball. You're not getting out of the way of a defender. And we're going to talk about why. So you see here, when he climbs the pocket, he puts himself between the defender and the ball. That's how we protect the ball. It's called a conflict climb, okay? We don't want to slide. Imagine if he was here and he did that thing that everybody loves to do where he slides the ball and his shoulders stay square and it's just the ball and then there's the defender right here. Balls, he's either going to get strip sacked or sacked or he's going to get a hold of him and he's not going to be able to keep his eyes downfield and extend the play, right? He does a good job of protecting the ball, putting himself between the defender and and the ball. That's where we got to be on a conflict climb. Now, when he climbs up in this pocket, we're going to talk about mechanics throwing on the run. You want to step, if you're a right-handed quarterback, you want to step with your throwing arm, so your right foot, you want to step with your throwing side foot at the target. If you were a lefty, it'd be your left foot. So, when he makes this throw, you can see his right leg steps in the ground, and what's that right leg doing? It's cutting off the target that's coming across the back of the end zone here. What that does is that gets your hips to the target, right? So the second you step with that right leg, your shoulders come back, and then you're going to be able to generate torque, and you see how he's able to rotate through again. His hip chasing the hip, right? His hip's coming through before the ball. He's got a lot of torque on this throw. I think he could keep this left arm tight, but like I said, not every throw is going to be a situation where we could be completely mechanically sound, but I know he will work on that, and I know he has been working on his passing skills. Just keep that arm a little bit tighter to your frame. That's the only thing I could say here, but again, tough situation, conflict climb, climb up in the pocket. This is a hell of a play by Josh Allen, but that's the mechanics of throwing on the run. You step with the your throwing side leg, Shoulders go back as you step, as you're aggressive with that front leg or with that right leg, and then that creates all the rotational force you need, and you just got to be very precise with your follow-through, flicking your wrist right at the target like you're throwing at a dartboard, and that's a great throw by Josh Allen. Watch this thing full speed one more time. Conflict, climb, protect the ball, climb up in the pocket, eyes downfield, step with your right leg, shoulders, let the ball go. Let's watch it full speed one more time. So protect the ball, climb up in the pocket here, step, shoulders going back, and throw a dot to the back of the end zone for a great job. All right guys i really want to thank you for watching i really appreciate it guys please leave in the comments any questions you guys might have i will really make sure to get back to you and i would actually really appreciate that and i'll see you guys next time